years. Keep the oil, keep the oil. Don't let them have the oil. I'll let you know when I go bad. I really think I'll be able to tell you because someday we go bad. Ding, boom. This is me, I, I hear. Bing. Three years lady, 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 how about that? We want everything to be run by wind. We'll put a windmill on the top of our car. They want wind. The wind is blowing today. There's no cognitive problem. If there was, I'd know about it. We've endorsed JP, right? J.D. Mandel, and he's doing great. And that means defeating Kamala Harris in a landslide. Did you just see Maduro? Venezuela, well, it's, uh, you know, Argentina, great guy. He's a big Trump guy. He loves Trump. I love him because he loves Trump. Viktor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's the leader of Turkey. We are a nation that is no longer admired, respected. Heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat your... Oh. Why would he mention Hannibal Lecter? He must be cognitively in trouble. No, 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 these are real stories. You see, he was a slightly troubled patient in an insane asylum, and he'd love to have you for dinner, you right there. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. I haven't changed. Maybe I've gotten worse, actually. Please, please, President, we don't want any more electricity. We can't stand it. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Let's talk about hot dogs. I just had one, actually. Elvis didn't have 50, and he had a guitar. I had no guitar. I didn't have the use, right? Elvis had a guitar. He had a lot. We love Elvis, right? Jimmy Connors is a... Jimmy, Jimmy Connors is good. He's also happy. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it. I think actually the debate should take place before the votes start being cast. Where's Hunter? Remember the sign we did? Where's Hunter? And Billy Ray Cyrus is here. Where's Billy Ray? He's around here someplace. And I don't say clean fakes, although they do. They, they... I'm proud to be promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. It's my favorite book. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody. Donald Trump found guilty all 34 counts of falsifying business records. Donald Trump's hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. She had an affair with Trump. I am the chosen one. The Trump Organization frauded the state of New York. $354 million. I'm very greedy. We must make America pray again. How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? There's a rigged trial. They rigged an election. The system is rigged. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. That created maybe the best economy. The virus that goes away in April with the heat. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. Instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Our country is sick. The USA is a mess. The sidewalk smell. Your country is being turned into a third world hellhole ruled by censors, perverts, criminals, and thugs. China! I just called to say hello. I said I thought you were a dissentist follower. Whatever documents a president decides to take with him, he has the absolute and unquestioned right to do so. I didn't take it out of my socks. I had boxes piled up in front of the White House. He's got boxes under his Corvette on his garage floor with a garage door that you can cut open with a... Recently, former President Donald Trump has proposed a sweeping plan to impose federal oversight on Washington, D.C., with the aim of addressing what he perceives as crime and governance issues within the city. This proposal involves overriding the city's local decision-making authority and implementing top-down control from the federal level. The Washington Post editorial board has strongly criticized this plan, denouncing it as rankly undemocratic. Although the U.S. Constitution grants Congress significant authority over the District of Columbia, making Trump's proposal technically permissible, the board views it as a major regression for local political representation. This criticism is set against the backdrop of a long-standing debate regarding the status of D.C., which has intensified as more advocates push for the district to become a full-fledged state. 
Such a change would not only provide D.C. residents with full congressional representation, but also prevent their local decisions from being subject to congressional veto. The editorial board pointed out that a glimpse into the potential implications of Trump's proposed federal control can be seen in the numerous bills introduced by GOP lawmakers in recent years. Nearly 50 such bills have sought to alter various aspects of D.C.'s governance, including local election laws, sports team logos, and even controversial proposals like banning abortion within the city. One of these bills even aimed to completely repeal the city's home rule, which allows local officials to govern without direct congressional intervention. These legislative moves are often justified as necessary measures to combat rising crime rates, which spiked during the pandemic and have remained high even as many other cities have managed to reduce their public safety issues. The editorial board acknowledged that the city has faced significant challenges, but also highlighted that democratic processes have responded effectively. In response to rising carjackings and homicides, the D.C. Council enacted anti-crime legislation with support from Mayor Muriel Bowser. Additionally, the courts increased the use of pretrial detention for potentially violent offenders. Police intensified their efforts against open-air drug markets, and the city expanded its police force to address these issues. In contrast to these local efforts, Trump's plan would place D.C. under the control of a federal congressional majority which could be dominated by Republicans. This shift would effectively strip D.C. residents of any meaningful role in their own governance, forcing them to be accountable to a federal body rather than their locally elected representatives. The editorial board underscored that even if the city had not shown improvements, its residents have an inherent right to self-governance. This principle is enshrined in the nation's founding documents and underscores the democratic value of allowing people to govern themselves, even if it means their leaders make mistakes. The board argued that democratic systems, despite their imperfections, possess an inherent capacity for self-correction that centralized, top-down systems often lack. Ironically, the board noted that the Pro-Trump Project 2025 document, an initiative that seeks to expand executive power and reshape federal programs with a conservative bent, endorses federalism, asserting that states are better equipped to understand and address their unique needs. This principle of federalism should logically extend to D.C. as well, the board concluded, without making any special exceptions for the district. In an interview with Laura Ingram on Monday, former President Donald Trump reaffirmed his controversial assertion that if Christians elect him this November, they won't need to vote again in four years because he will have fixed it so good. During the Fox News segment, Ingram provided Trump with an opportunity to clarify his statement and dispel any concerns about interfering with future elections. There's a concern that you told a Christian audience they won't need to vote again in the future, Ingram said. However, Trump did not retract or modify his remarks. Instead, he elaborated on his initial claim. What I meant by that is, Trump explained, I was speaking to a large group of Christians who were very supportive of me. This crowd was incredibly enthusiastic. He went on to criticize the current administration for allegedly mistreating Christians and claimed